yeah, Tyson Fury on a Furiosity channel. I mean, don't want to be criti- too critical, but he hasn't done this interview with, you know, it doesn't have to be us, but he hasn't done it with a boxing social or a boxing news. He, he's done it with, you know, bought media, I guess is what people call it these days, but someone who he has a stake in, uh, in Furiosity. I've never, I don't think I've ever even drunk any Furiosity, so I can't tell you if it's any good or not. Um, I know Frank Warren says he loves it, but you've got to wonder how much he's drunk of it as well. He's more of a wine guy in my experience. Uh, but yeah, so Fury's done this interview. He's obviously wants to give the right uh, image, the right presentation, given the last thing anyone saw of him was either losing to Usyk or the incident in the pub um, up in Morecambe. And, you know, he's, he's back in the gym. He's getting ready for the rematch. It's what we've heard privately as well. Joseph Parker in a recent interview we did said, Fury had said to him, look, you know, he was laughing about it, but he said, look, it's definitely time to get back in the gym. You know, devil makes work for idle hands and all of that. Fury is a, you know, God-fearing man. We'll, we'll get on board with that. And he's getting ready for the rematch now. But I'm not sure any of these comments, maybe they're designed to get under Usyk's skin because he wasn't quite able to do that before the first fight. You know, maybe he wants the Usyk team to think that he's underestimating Usyk, that he's complacent about the rematch. I mean, I think complacency was a big problem for Fury in the first fight, actually, during. Um, so that's something we can talk about. But I, I am concerned if any of this isn't tongue-in-cheek and if Fury really believes that Usyk's, you know, an easy kind of amateur style, someone that he should have beaten. And because, you know, it was more comfortable than he was anticipating, he took his foot off the gas and that's why he lost. Because I expect an improved Usyk in the rematch. I expect Usyk to now be more accustomed to Fury's range and size. Um, in a way that he wouldn't have become just by fighting similar uh, size sparring partners. And I think Usyk, it's a long time off for him as well, you know, six months or more, no, seven months, isn't it, between first fight and second. And I just, yeah, I kind of feel like Usyk will be much improved also. And if Fury thinks it is going to be a walk in the park, then he's going to be sorely mistaken. Um, Eamon, what do you think? How serious can we take Fury's comments? So just quickly, I did a little Google of this Truman Capote fella. (laughs) A writer clearly wrote some influential books that people in the chat might have read before. But imagine doing a little Google search and then seeing this sentence says, I love reading a huge list of books that I love from fictional novels such as The Old Man, The Sea by Ernest by, uh, the sea by Ernest Hemingway, or A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, or non-fiction such as Muhammad Ali by Thomas Hauser, or In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. In the same sentence, you've got boxing and Truman Capote clashing maybe... Thomas Hauser might know or have heard of or even read some of Truman Capote's books. But anyway, in answer of your question, look, I I quite liked hearing what Fury had to say, not in the context of what he actually had to say, but to know that the hyper competitor in this elite level athlete is there. And hyper competitors like Tyson Fury tend to be sore losers. Tyson Fury here is being a sore loser. And I remember one of those moments, if you cast your mind back to when Anthony Joshua lost to Andy Ruiz, um, when he was supposed to be fighting Jarrell Miller that that week, a lot of hardcore fans were really disappointed as to the way AJ reacted to that defeat. He was a bit too nicey-nice. He was a bit too happy to maybe have you know, given away the O. Oh, of course, Anthony Joshua wasn't in the best of states right then and there and maybe shouldn't be doing interviews. Probably just should have been escorted straight to the uh, the back room, the dressing room. But uh, and, and just to caveat as well too, sometimes AJ can't win with the way that he reacts to situations as well because further down the line, AJ ended up you know, going nuclear, I guess, when he lost to Alexander Usyk. But I want to see someone at that level of competition, not be happy with the result. I want to see someone at that level, you know, want to get that back and think that they can win and think that they did win and want to put that wrong right in their mind because it shows that they've, they haven't they have got two feet out of the sport. They've not got one mind on the next Netflix documentary or the next flavour of their drink or the next iteration of their book. We're talking about authors here. Fury's got a few books out there which... Um, you can read on the markets. I want I want to see, I want to hear from a Tyson Fury that has that grit and determination to want to really go for Alexander Usyk. And we seem to be getting that right now. So I quite liked hearing Fury, although I don't agree with what he said there. 
I think that those are the signs and the little bits you need to hear to know that Fury's all business for later on this year. Yeah, just to go back to the chat briefly. Uh, beautiful Golden Dragon, I'm not saying the eights anymore, says Eamon can't even pronounce Capote. Please tell him how to pronounce it. Grey Dad Guy. That's me. I'm Grey Dad Guy. <laughs> I wanted a new moniker for a while. I'm Grey Dad Guy. Do you think that could be like memeable? Could I be? Could I become like a viral sensation? Grey Dad Fam Guy from Seconds Out. Family uh, Guy, Grey Dad Guy. It doesn't quite have a ring. Someone will turn that into something a little bit better. Truman Capote. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Toby Bartley says, good evening, Seconds Out and the chat. Uh, Thunder Road's asking everyone to hit the thumbs up. Always appreciate you, Thunder Road. Um, yeah, Tyson Fury. I mean, let us know what you think in the chat, as well as talking about us and you know pronunciations and new nicknames and so on. What do you think of this Tyson Fury interview? Have you watched it in full? And if so, or even if you haven't, even if you've only seen the headlines, what do you make of it? Is it mind games? Is it self-delusion? You know, what? it's got to be something along those lines. You don't just release a video. He's obviously gone out of his way to do it, to say those things within it. Why has he done so? What's the thinking? But there's always a plan with Tyson Fury. You know, as much as people like to paint him out to be this spontaneous guy, I don't think it's that simple. I think once he's got a camera in his face, he knows what his intentions are. Uh, Neil Sinclair says, totally wrong. He's saying so he can say I won easily. I don't need to fight him again. It's his way of worming his way out. So Neil Sinclair here, not the boxer, it's spelt differently, what Xbox are, but Neil Sinclair obviously thinks it's a, a preface to Tyson Fury pulling out of the rematch. In December 20 on December 21st. Let's hope that's not the case. Certainly uh, want to see the fight again. Uh, Jack Dutton says, I hope you're right either that or he's in complete denial, in which case he will lose again, maybe even knocked out this time. That's a very important point that Jack Dutton's raised there because if Tyson Fury genuinely believes it was an easy fight, particularly in the rounds that most people consider he won beyond doubt, four, five and six, and he just, and a lot of people have said this, not just Tyson Fury in fairness, have said he just needs to do more of what he did in four, five and six and that will be enough to win the rematch. That is a concern, because if he thinks he did very little wrong and there's very little that needs changing in camp and in the fight itself, then he will presumably lose again because uh, Usyk will have improved. He'll be ready to adjust to Fury's adjustments if he makes any. I think Fury needs to... And I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm not sure how this video should be taken, but I think Tyson Fury needs to recognise that it wasn't. it was a close fight, but not many people had him winning at the end except him and his team, presumably. Um, I think Fury, yes, he should have done more of what he was doing in the middle rounds, but I think that uh, resurgence from Usyk in the kind of, what was it, round eight, nine and ten, I think that would have happened anyway. I think he still would have come back strong. It's just could Tyson Fury have survived and repelled that offence a bit better than he did? And are there certain adjustments he needs to make technically, tactically to, to make that happen? If he thinks he doesn't, if he thinks job's done as long as he just does the things he does well even more, then I think he's he's cruising for another bruising. Uh, sorry to bring that classic out. 